thank you so much for doing this interview with me as we are here at the CBC building. Uh, new, uh, what, what, do we call this a documentary? Do we documentary on something that happened several years ago that really shocked the world, shocked Canadians? And hopefully with this, we're going to get some answers. Please explain what I'm talking about here. Yes, back in 2011, uh, Richard Oland, who is one of the Oland family, um, the Moosehead Brewing family, was found bludgeoned to death in his office in St. John, New Brunswick. And um, our documentary is a four-part series following the, um, the uh, retrial of his son for that murder. Why did you decide to take on something like this? Uh, because, I mean... So sensational. So, like, so many questions. Um, I couldn't even imagine trying to take on something like this. Well, it's... Most true crime stories, most uh, s stories about this kind of topic are told in the past. The whole crime is over. Um, but when I was reading about the... the um, retrial application of Dennis Oland, I thought, I think he might win his retrial. And uh, this was the opportunity to follow a, a case as it happened in real time. And that doesn't happen very often, especially in crime. Um, and so we went after the access and, and uh, were able to, to be there as the big um, momentous and not so momentous um, occasions happen throughout the year. So what do we see? What parts do we see? How did you get this access and how did you get this trust? Oh, well, how did we get the access? My uh, producing partner, Nicole Lawson, made the first reach out. She likes to make um, uncomfortable phone calls, bless her heart. Um, and then we just started, I'm from Vancouver, Nicole and I are from Vancouver and the whole production team is in Vancouver. And we just started flying across the country, talking to the family, talking to the defense team and um, telling them that we really wanted their side of the story told. They'd been close-lipped for the five or six years that led up to his first um, uh, verdict of, of guilty. And so we just wanted to convince them that we wanted that side of the story to be told as well as the story that was being told in the media. So um, it was delicate access and uh, required a lot of hand-holding, but we um, slowly but surely gained their trust and were able to be there as they strategized uh, their defense uh, for the retrial and um, as new evidence was uncovered by their private detectives and um, as all the decisions were made up until the final verdict. What are some of the... Oh, give me one surprise do you think that we're going to get from this that maybe none of us have gotten from the news or anything that you guys were able to uncover or film or just even a moment where you go, wow, this is what's going to make this documentary so sensational. Oh, gosh. Uh, well... To me, I think that most Canadians, what we think we know about our justice system, we actually get from American television. Um, so there are a lot of things that we don't know um, and that will be revealed in, in the film. Um, but I think for me the most uh, interesting part of it was the application for a judge alone. They wanted to go without a jury this time. Um, how long it took to make that argument, losing that argument, going through the uh, the jury selection process, which was startling in a in a small town with so much pretrial publicity. Um, so I think to me, everything that happened around the jury and having a judge alone trial was riveting and shocking. What was it like for you, though, emotionally going through all of this? Because as much as you're watching all of this happen in front of you, I know, like, I've been on a jury once. So yeah. I knew what it took out of me just for two weeks to be on a murder trial. What was it like for you for this whole process? It was very emotional. A very emotional process. Um, either I or Nicole sat through every single day of that trial, the second trial, and um, and it was emotional because you know it was emotional to see the police officers on the stand and and they, see their emotion. It was emotional to to be able to leave the court in that day and then go and speak to the Olins and see how they were feeling about what was going on in court. And then I was literally on pins and needles the day of the verdict. Yeah. I knew what I thought it should be, but I didn't know what it would actually be. No one does until the, the judge makes the declaration. Yeah. What do you hope uh, viewers will get from this? I think, I think one of the things I'd like viewers to get from this is to really pay attention to the whole issue of accused and wrongful conviction. Um, 
wrongfully accused and wrongfully convicted is something that tends to hang on to that person for the rest of their lives. And I'm going to jump in, especially with social media, the social media world. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. The, the, you know, it didn't matter what uh, the verdict was. People maintain their, um, their decisions. And that's really, it's really very painful. And um, I think one of the things that we all have to pay attention to is just because you're accused doesn't mean that you did this. And if you're found not guilty, not guilty means not guilty. Um, and that's something very difficult, very difficult for Canadians, I think, to get their heads around. Looking forward to seeing this. Thank you so much for your time in this interview. Thank you so much.